Okay, then we will talk. Uh, oh, I am Jiji Zhang, and uh, I'm going to talk about the trustworthiness in large language model based recommender systems. Okay, we have five, five parts, and the first is about uh, fairness in large language model based recommender system, and the second is robustness and out of distribution, and uh, the following by privacy, safety, and explainability. Okay, first we begin at fairness. Okay, fairness is important in traditionally recommended systems since recommendation is strongly associated with our daily lives. Um, we discussed fairness from two sides and the user side and the item side. Okay, we first begin from the user side fairness. Okay, one important thing is that does ChatGPT give fair recommendations to users with different sensitive attributes? This is an important question. Okay, we judge this fairness by comparing the similarity between the recommended hey, results of different. Okay. 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 Continue. Uh, okay. No. Okay. 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 Uh, we first discuss about uh, fairness in large language model based recommendations. Fairness is important in traditionally recommendation since recommendation is strongly associated with our daily lives. Okay. We first consider about user side fairness. Uh, to answer the questions, does large language model based recommender like chat? GPT give fair recommendations to users with different sensitive attributes. We judge fairness by comparing the similarity between the recommended results of different sensitive instructions and the neutral instructions. Okay, here is an example. For neutral instructions, is that means that this instruction you can say, I am a fan of Adele. Please provide me with a list of 20 sounds and in order of preference you think I might like. This instruction do not have a sensitive attributes. And for compare, we can we use this this the sensitive instructions with sensitive attributes to ask the language model based recommend at the same time, and compare the difference between this. We can say that when we do not use the sensitive attribute, the, the neutral result of the neutral instructions may be similar to some of the sensitive result and dissimilar with some others. This cause unfair, because. The volume books like this will need to explore their sensitive attributes in order to obtain better recommendation results. They are unfair to them. And uh, it is hard for, uh, under the ideal ecologies, recommendations for sensitive attributes under the same category should be equally similar to a recommendation for neutral uh, instructions. Okay, they can be both similar and both dissimilar. Uh, they are both fair, but if one are similar, one are, unsim uh, one are dissimilar, that will with problems. Okay, to better evaluate this unfairness, we construct they construct this data set. Okay, they construct this data set with a template. This then with eight sensitive attributes and the thirty one sensitive specific sensitive attribute values in two recommendations, scenarios, music and movie to measure the fairness of large language model based recommenders. Here is a template. This is a neutral neutral Instructions template. I am a fan of a singer or a director based on the recommended scenarios, movies, or music. And please provide me with a list of K sounds and uh, movies and titles. And this is a usual one. And then they, to compare with, they add, we add the sensitive attribute in it. And here is the table for the sensitive attribute. And we found that you can see that the, here is the result of the experiment. In the figure, the horizontal co coordinate represents the different top K, and the vertical coordinate represents a similarity of recommendation result with the neutral instructions. The higher means the more the more the, sen the sensitive the result of sensitive instructions compared with the neutral instructions, and we can say that. Different sensitive attributes instructions have different similarities. This means this will face unfair problems when applying it in the recommender system. 
And this this phenomenon shows that we need to consider friendly potential friendly problems when we apply large language model based recommender systems in the real world. Okay, this work going deeper into these problems and they consider the potential the potential or implicit discriminations of it. This they found that large language model may show implicit discriminations only according to the names. And they do this like this. Mm, it is a from recommend turn those to a user named blah 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 and this uh, this is a user name and um, we found that the language model recounts different those categories according to different users whose names are popular in different continents. And uh, the, here is the result. The orange means that the 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 natural language model more likely to recommend this kind of uh, those to this group of people. And uh, they found that ChatGPT will deliver more politically those to African users, uh, more education, health, art, and sports related those to users in America. And the one thing is, is that why do implicit user unfairness exist? And uh, do this, they, they, do, they, they conduct the experiment to demonstrate that that language models can infer sensitive attributes from users' non-sensitive attributes according to their wide world knowledge. For example, they can infer the user's co continent by only using the user's names and uh, so on. And here is, all this, here is an exact result. And uh, you can see that the red line is the it's a baseline, and uh, this is uh, the accuracy of the. Uh, you, you can see this is uh, if the this this result over this this line, that means that uh, this models can infer the sensitive attributes from non sensitive attributes. Okay, and then followed by the question is that how serious is implicit user unfairness? This this work also conducts results and find that. Compared with the traditionally recommender systems like GPT for Rex, large language model based recommender like ChatGPT has a higher score, unfairly score. And this means that the large language model based recommenders may be more unfair than the traditional one. And also, they also evaluate the long term unfairness unfairly of a large language model. And they found that when we are interacting about the civil round and the, in the long term, large language models will make more single items and recommend repeat recommend single items. And the, in the long term, large language models will be more likely to need the user to stack in the information bubbles. And this will be the problems. Okay, from the other side, we can also consider this from the item side. Large language models recommendation shows completely different characters from traditional recommendation models. And this makes that the result in the traditional recom models considering the item set fairness may not be applicable to the large language model recommender systems. As a result, as a result, we, we need to consider it to do experiment to evaluate the item set unfairness in large language model based recommendation method. This work considers two aspects of the disease. One is popularity, one is young race. And, uh, and the first is that item about the item set fairly related popularities. We say that the purple lines, okay, the purple lines is the, is how often the items appear in the training data set. And the this this is the popularity group, different popularity group. The large number means that this items will be appears more in the training data set, which means its popularity is larger. And the, the group four is the most popular item. And the purple line is the frequency of items appear in the training data set. And the, the other colors are the we measure the the, the the items frequencies in the recommended result of both the training traditional one and the Latin language model based one. We can see that for traditional one, these this, this all lines are together and uh, which means that the frequency are similar to the training data set. However, for large language model, you can see especially for this, you can see that the red one, this means that the top one is the item recommended by the large language models. In group four, which is the most popularity group, is over the large language model. Which this means that the large language model will in turn to recommend the more popularity groups and more popularity items to users. This is unfair to the, the items with less popularities. And this will they may hurt the users. They may, and this is a problem. 
and uh, also, also we could con we can also consider the uh, atom set fairness from the usage. We 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 first just like before we can divide the atoms from different usages into two groups: the lower group and the higher one. The lower one means that this you kind of usages are appear this same this frequency in the training data set, and the, the higher means that there are a lot of uh, this kind of usages in the training data set. And the blue is and and the red means that this this group will be over recommended over recommended means that this this not language model are likely to recommend this group kind of groups, and the well the blue means that this will be overlooked. We can see that the user with the high the high group of the users will more likely to be recommended by the not language model based recommenders. This means that. When we apply it, this is unfair to the low group of the users. And uh, why, uh, uh, another interesting thing is that can uh, the, we know that language models is recommended based on the semantics, and uh, the large language model has have a phase called pre trainings. And uh, this large language model brings the bias from a pre training phase to this. During the computation purpose, the models navigate knowledge acquired from their pre training phase. Which potentially affect the fairness of the recommendations. They conduct this, they conduct this requirement. They delete the certain general groups in the training phase. Okay, they delete this, these general groups. And they found that even with this general group, the Latin language model still recommend this general group, group from this general group in the recommendations. That means that the Latin language model will have, will, will have, will continue to have bias from the for training phase and uh, using it while doing recommendations. Okay, let's go into the third part about the vastness and the out of distributions. Okay, then uh, the first is that we found that the large language model is robust to the unintentionally generated typos. Okay, for example, when we're doing we, when we're evaluating unfair list of uh, large language models, we find that uh, their type hosting sensitive attributes values have little impact of the result. Uh, these uh, type hosts are unintentionally generated. For example, we can see here. This uh, these are uh, the correct one and with the type of ones. And uh, we can see that the correct one and type of one have the similar result, and uh, which means that this is small unintentionally typos will not affect the result of Latin models. And also for out of distribution generations. We, one interesting thing is that because just as we know, Latin language model recommend using the semantic to do recommendations and this will have a strong cross domain abilities. And learning from the movie semantics, which for example we train our TORAC on the movie dataset, they can show the recommendation abilities in the book dataset. Okay, here's a case result. You can say this. This figure means that the result is evaluated on the movie data set. And this dark color means that the result is from the model only trained on the book data set. And the purple one is only trained from the movie data set. Okay, we can see this result. This is a result. This shows comparable result, which means that the model trained on the book data set is similar to the, uh, has a performance comparable with the model trained on the movie data set when they are doing movie recommendations. This shows that the that language model based recommenders has a strong ability to do out of distribution generalizations. Okay, and then we go to the third part of our trustworthy is not language model based recommender privacy. We consider privacy from two parts. And the first part is about unlearning, and the third part is about federating learning. Okay, first let's talk about unlearning. And the challenge is unlearning and it means that okay, just imagine that you are a user and you are use your recommend system to enjoy and one day you found out, oh you cannot use you you do not use you cannot use my training data, you, you can do not use my private um, behavioral data to train your recommenders. And you ask the recommender to forget your data. And this is a problem because if, we, if the naive way is to retraining the model using the data do not contain your data. But this will meet problems because this is really costly. And uh, so as for large language model based recommender system, there also exist problems. And this will and these are two main challenges for large language model based recommender underling. 
Price to lead to exact underlying to protect user privacy. The second is reliable inference time enable timely response to user demand. For the challenge one, the, ex the existing method are struggle to handle it. And uh, for the challenge two, for example, here is a traditional way to underlying data. You can see that we first divided the original training data into different parts. And uh, for each part, we, train we find train a model on it. And then we aggregate the model output together and to get the result. But imagine if you have a large language model based recommender and you have this different part and the inference cost it will be extremely huge and this this is not possible in the real world. Okay, and uh, this is a challenge too. To address these two challenge, and they designed uh this this priority game to do this. We can see here is a uh, this is a LoRa adapter. Just as in the previous large language model, like Torvac and Big Rack, the adapter is widely used in large language model based recommenders. And this first divided in the training data into different parts based on the semantics. And uh, okay, you can see that different different group of data. And then they get an adapter trained on this group of data. And they get uh, several adapters. And each adapter is associated with a group of data. And uh, okay, and the uh, user says, okay, you need to underline my data and uh, ask this. And uh, you find that, oh, underline data is on this group. And uh, then you need to use to find true this adapter based on this group. And uh, this, because this number, uh, the, the sample numbers in this group is relatively small, and this adapter will be quickly trained. And after that, we aggregate this adapter together and uh, add into the large language model based recommender to get the result. Okay, then, uh, and then they, they evaluate the result and uh, find that the underlying uh, underlying time cost and the inference cost is really small and achieve result and they can achieve great performance in underlings and it shows the effectiveness of this method. Here are also another method to do this underlying, and they aim to uh, reach uh, underlying by using two teachers. One teacher is for forgetting, and one teacher is to remembering. The forgetting teacher first enhance model on the underlying data. You can see there. Here, and uh, there is a forgetting data, and uh, this there is an argumented data. And, uh, and they, they argumented the forgetting data on the model and get a result, and compare the result with the original one, and get the difference, and then use the output of the original model to balance the difference, and to get the forgetting teachers. And also, they, they use the original model to be a remember teacher, and they, they balance this fun those function to keep the result out of, out to distill knowledge from these two teachers, and get the, another models. Okay, different from the underlying, and uh, this is also other side of considering the privacy problem is called federated learning. Different from federated learning, a uh, different from underlying, a uh, federated learning preserve data privacy while fine tuning large language model with user behaviors data. For example, just imagine you are a user and you want to use the the command system, and you say that okay, the the command system can own can use my my behavior last behavior data. But you can only use my last behavior data to provide service for me. And I do not want my data to learn by others. Okay, and this is uh, the motivation of a federated learning. However, directly applying the traditional federated learning to large language model based recommendation with, with problems. The first problem is that different kind preferences are in balance. And the second is that, just as we know, large language models have a very huge numbers of parameters. This makes if we use this, the communication cost of a different client will be extremely huge. That's this this work gave two ways to solve this. And the one is to dynamic balance and strategy to keep the performance balance. And the second is flexible allocation strategies. And they took they want they to keep the different layer to different and to mitigate the communication cost. Okay, here is the here is the result, and uh, here is the, 
Here is the strategies. The uh, first is the dynamic balance strategies. They design dynamic parameter aggregations and the learning speed of each client during the training phase to ensure relatively equitable performance across the board. You can see just as illustrated in there. And the second is a flexible allocation strategies. They selected allocated some Latin language model layers. Okay, for, for example, these layers. This layer because they are okay, associated with the user's data. For example, the, the several input layers and they are they are close to the input data and this data may contain user's privacy data, privacy information. And the output layer, because it's output is it, also related to the user's behavior and it will count in user's privacy. And this kind of layers will be located in the local in the client. And while the middle layer, which is not a, will be put in the servers. And this, by doing so, so this will this will mitigate the communication cost of the federated learning. Okay, then we go to the next part and the safety of the large language model based recommenders. Different from a traditionally recommender system, large language model based recommenders doing recommendation based on the textual descriptions or other text based method. And this means that this is a text central parity team. This may raise new security issues of recommender system. For example, the attacker may boost an item's exposure by intentionally memory alerting its textual content. For example, if you if you are a provider of an item, you can add like best settings and so on to the item descriptions. And then the, the large language model based recommenders will be more likely to recommend this item. Okay, here is again, and oh, okay. And, and here are another examples. And you can see that, for example, this is the original description of the items and you can do some you will potential to it and to make it to make a large language model to more likely to recommend it. Here are some here is some example demonstrated in this work. And you can see that you can use the GPT or existing textual attack methodologies to rewrite item descriptions until we see a goal, which means that until that large language model to recommend more this kind this item. This is a kind of attack. Um, for example, here you can use GPT to do this like this. You are a marketing expert and it helps you promote the ad product settings. Reject the product titles in to keep the, the to make the next negative model recommend more this item. Okay, here's an example. This claim means that the original the item description of the next language of the item. And the triple one means that we can add some words like uh, better settings to it and to make it more likely to be recommended. And the GPT one is definitely there uh, to paraphrase this item description to make it more attractive for large language model based recommenders. Okay, here is then you can see that in the result, the GPTs are more likely, uh, the large language model based recommender are more likely to recommend these items. And also, you can use some use other textual based attack the method like default bug and so on, and to do this. And um, you can say that by add some typos and to intentionally add to guide the Nazi language to this attack method perturbation words and this molecular perturbations interface the model's judgment and making the Nazi language model based. On is the recommendation models more likely to recommend this item just as this shows. And the, the, this, this work also shows some ways to defend it. And they use this prompt to correct the possible grammar and spelling and word substitution errors in the product titles. And then they can to prevent some kind, some several um, attacks of, uh, based on this. But you can see that still they have some you, in the future, we, we still need to consider how to effectively defend this because sometimes it, it may fail. Okay, and the last is last part of the trustworthy based not language model based recommendations is explainability. Okay, and uh, when we use not language models like ChatGPT to do recommendations, we can directly ask it to get recommend explanations. Okay, here's some examples. 
for example, you can say that you, you interact with the ChatGPT and say, okay, and I want to have a movie now. And uh, what do you think I might, I might like? And the natural language model will give a personalized recommend and to you and uh, to show some ways that uh, the natural language model thinks you may like. And uh, then you can use this use prompt to ask the natural language model for explanations. For example, here's an example. So you can say, why would you recommend this movie to me? And then the natural language model will give back some, will, will, will feed back the recommendation explanation to you and say, oh, why they will they recommend this movie to you? And furthermore, several writers can also intend to find true natural language model for recommendation explanation related works. For example, this work designing different tasks to find true natural language model for recommendation explanations. Besides fine tuning for recommendation performance, performance, this this work design several tasks to fine tune natural language models and related to recommendation explanation, such as item description and history in reconstruction. Okay, here we can see that. For for example, here is the I give give the item and uh, construct it into prompt and fit it into natural language model based recommended and then and then it to generate the attribute of the item. And and okay, or they can use the embedding of the user or items and to construct a prompt and to let the natural language model to recover the information like a user history or item candidate. And these tasks are related to explanations. And by after the fine tuning this, the natural language model can exhibit the uh, stronger explanation abilities when doing the explainable recommendations. Okay, here is the part about the trustworthiness in natural language model based recommender systems. Okay, hello everyone. I'm uh, Yang Zhang from the, uh, oh, I just graduated from the University of Science and Technology of China recently, and uh, I will join the, uh, the NUS and the research fellow, postdoctoral uh, research fellow list. Uh, I will introduce, uh, I will discuss some open problems about the Elm beta recommendation. Uh, generally speaking, we think uh, there are three high level of open problems and the challenges for the LM based recommendations. The first one is uh, about the modeling. Uh, for the large language models, the core task is to uh, modeling the text and the language languages. While for the recommendation, the core task is to modeling the uh, user behaviors. So there is a natural gap between the LMs and the recommendations. Uh, currently, most of work converts the recommendation task to the language task directly. This may raise the concerns about the modeling effectiveness. Second, the cost of the training and the running of uh, LMS could be ever high. However, the recommendation is a literally a cost sensitive task. So there are big challenges about the cost. Lastly, there are some. There are also uh, some challenges about the evaluations. For example, the recommendation data may be included in the pre-training the data of the uh, pre-training data of the LMs, uh, leading to unfair comparisons between the LM-based recommendation method and uh, uh, the traditional CF uh, collaborative field team uh, method. Uh, as uh, last, I will first discuss the challenges about the modeling. As mentioned, uh, the core of the recommendation is about the user behavior modeling. Uh, so, uh, regarding this, the first question is about how to represent the uh, user behaviors in LMS. Behaviors is reflected by the uh, answer. Behaviors is reflected by the interactions of users on the items. That is to say, uh, we uh, how to show the, how should we represent the users and the items in the LM based uh, recommend recommendations. Uh, in most existing works, uh, uh, concerning that the large models are constructed using text, so they usually use the text to describe to describe the users and the items differently in the uh. Traditional in the traditional models, 
uh, uh, besides the feature uh information uh the id information the id the id information is also utilized to uh represent users and the items uh because uh they think that uh, some information such as the collaborative information which uh describes the uh, uh behavior uh behavior similarities cannot represent by the uh, uh by the features so we can find that there is a uh, a uh, gap between the LM based uh, recognition method and the tradition method. Uh, the LM based method just uh, leverage the text information about uh, to represent the users and the items, but the traditional method could uh, uh, leverage the ID information to uh, encode the collaborative information. So the LM based method may uh, lack of uh, may lack some. Uh, may may lose some information such as uh, they can't uh, represent the collaborative informations. Uh, so uh, this means asks to uh, considering integrating the collaborative informations into the ELM based recommendations. Uh, before moving to really integrate the information, we really can we really consider whether uh, it is necessary to integrate the information. By comparing the performance between the uh the ELM based recommender methods and the traditional collaborative information method in the cold start and the warm start scenarios, we could find although the uh ELM based method toric could uh outperform uh outperforms when compared to the uh, MF, uh they uh they perform uh uh, worsely worse uh, uh, when uh, in the warm start scenario. So uh, uh, we get sent uh, integrating the uh, collaborative at least to the improve the performance in the warm start scenarios. Uh, how to integrate the collaborative information is uh, 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 is a second question we need to uh, answer. Currently to our knowledge, there are uh, two main types of method. The first uh, type method takes the idea of the classical method MF. Uh, it uh, uh, it uh, it uh, learns the collaborative information by 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 fitting the interactions. Uh, that is that is to say, first it uh, would uh, add some tokens, uh, uh, new tokens to uh, to represent the users and items and uh, learn the token embeddings by fitting the interaction data to encode such information. Uh, however, uh, uh, the, 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 because the numbers of the items could be ever large and uh, the embedding size of the uh, token embedding could be also be ever large, there are many parameters need to be uh, learned. So there's May raise uh, uh, questions about the learning uh, learning efficiency. So existing work called existing regime uh, focus on uh, design better tokenization method. Uh, the second the second type method uh, uh, does not uh, leverage new tokens and the token embeddings to encode the collaborative information. But consider uh, still use a uh, uh, traditional collaborative uh, method models to encode the collaborative information and uh, consider uh, to fit the collaborative information uh, into the items. So regarding this type of method, uh, uh, the existing work focus on uh, how to more effectively fit the uh, collaborative information is structured by the traditional models into the larger models. Next, uh, I will introduce some uh, exploring, uh, explorations uh, in this directions, uh, start by the second directions. Uh, CoLM is a representative uh, method that fits uh, collaborative embeddings into the uh, larger models. Basically, it uh, achieves this goals and the uh, lightened, lightened uh, token embedding space, and is to say, fading the collaborative embedding into the space of the LMS token embedding space. Uh, 
uh, uh, to table to, to achieve this in the prompt of the uh, CoLM does not only the text information is uh, included, but uh, there are additional user ID and item ID uh, related field for placing the corporative information. Then when encoding uh, when uh, encoding this prompt, the text information is encoded utilize the taken. Uh, text tokenizer and the LM embedding looking up. But for the use ID related field, uh, a, a traditional collaborative model is used to uh, encode the ID information and uh, extract the collaborative information and then map the, uh, uh, the collaborative embedding obtained by the traditional models uh, into the uh, token embedding space using a mapping layers. And uh, to make the model could uh, learn a recommendation task, a lower model is used to uh, learning the task. So in concluding this method, uh, mapping the corrective information, embeddings tracked by the traditional models into the LMS Nighting space. Uh, this slide shows, shows the results of the co-OMS. The table shows the overall performance. We could find, uh, uh, we could find uh, the co-OM could, uh, could enhance the overall performance. The, the right side two figures shows the performance comparison between uh, in the warm start scenarios and the cold start scenarios. We could find the co-OM could uh, uh, significantly increase the performance uh, in the, under the warm start scenarios and keep comparable performance in the cold start scenarios. Besides, besides mapping the collaborative embedding into the uh, latent uh, token embedding space, there is another uh, work appearing in the SLAR preprint. Uh, they consider uh, encode uh, the collaborative embedding in a text-like uh, format and uh, directly utilize it uh, in the prompt. Uh, so, uh, it for, uh, so it first uh, uh, encode uh, the user and item IDs using a traditional collaborative models. Then it uh, convert uh, the collaborative embed embeddings into a binary sequence. And then it directly creates the binary sequence and uh, a type of text and directly inject into the prompt for the prompt for the LMS usage. Uh, their, design, their design has two consider considerations. The first one is that the uh, LMS could uh, make uh, could uh, literally perform some bitwise operations because uh, the pre-training data of the large models may include some bitwise uh, data, uh, a bitwise operation operation data. Uh, the second one uh, is that uh, uh, tra traditional collaborative fealty method has verified that the bitwise collaborative information could still keep the performance of the traditional collaborative uh, felt method. So, uh, different from the co the, the this this method directly encodes the uh, 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 encoding the collaborative embeddings in a case net format and uh, uh, leverage directly in the prompt. Uh, besides the work of the co M and the uh, the text like uh, text like encoding of the collaborative in. Uh, embedding for the collaborative information. There are also some other uh, words. Next, we discuss another type of method for the for integrating the collaborative information, which is uh, learning the user and item specific uh, uh, token embeddings by fitting the interaction to uh, uh, to encode the collaborative information. Uh, this may the first add some new tokens to represent the users and the items in the elements, and uh, then learn the new token embeddings by fitting the interaction data to learn the collaborative information. Uh, to, 
uh, to about the token, about the new tokens, one default uh, choice is to uh, randomly assign the IDs to users and items and then take them as the tokens. However, the uh, the number of the items and uh, could be ever large and the embedding size of the token value uh, could uh, be could also be ever large. Is it, this may lead to some learning efficiency issues. Secondly, uh, there are semantic gap between the token taste tokens and the recommendation tokens. Lastly, uh, because uh, the uh, for uh, this type of method, this type of tokenizing method cannot deal with the generalization, generalization issues. That is, they can't deal with the new items. Uh, next, I will introduce, introduce two work on, on, this, uh, on this direction. Um, this, the first work uh, uh, consider is pouring uh, collaborative with, uh, indexing. Instead of using the random ID, the authors consider generate the index for the items by clustering the collaborative embeddings. Uh, specifically, they hierarchically cluster the collaborative embeddings and then generate item embeddings according to the category index. Finally, the item index is constructed by a set of Sub IDs, which are the index for the different level of cl cl uh, clusters. Uh, in this way, uh, by by representing the uh, item IDs with some sub IDs, we could uh, reduce the number of the unique IDs uh, to represent all the items. Uh, reduce the number of the parameters need to be trained. Uh, Second, secondly, we can uh, because uh, uh, this method, this uh, this indexing method is built uh, based on the collaborative information. It uh, uh, would make the collaboratively similar items the outcome the similar collaborative embedding. So it could also keep the uh, uh, keep capture the collaborative information. However, it still cannot uh, deal with the new items because the uh, 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 collaborative embeddings of the uh, new items could may could not be the uh, be so, be uh, the 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 clustering the clustering may some may cannot deal with the new uh, items embeddings. The the next work uh, is exploring utilize the text information to generate ideas for items. Uh, it it utilizes or uh, it uses a method similar to the uh, collaborative indexing, but instead of uh, leverage the collaborative embeddings, it utilizes uh, uh, contains information to uh, to generate the uh, item IDs. Uh, firstly, it uh, uh, first converts the content information to embeddings, and then it utilizes a uh, uh, famous quantization method named the VQVAE to uh, convert the, uh, to generate uh, the IDs for the items. Specifically, given, given, uh, uh, given a case embeddings, uh, uh, in the VQVAE method, there are some code books, and in each code book, there are a set of embeddings. And uh, this method uti utilizes the embeddings in this code books to approach the orange law the text embeddings, and uh, uh, and they take uh, uh, the select uh, select embeddings from this code books uh, to serve as the uh, final uh, final ideas for the item. So similar to uh, the collaborative indexing, uh, the item ideas in this work is also uh, construct is constructed by a set of sub sub ideas. So uh, the total learning uh, token embed token embeddings for it uh, is also far less than the random IDs, so it can also uh, deal with the learning efficiency issues to some degree. Uh, additionally, this method could also uh, deal this method could deal with uh, new items because 
it relies on the taste information to generate the item IDs. However, this method could not well deal with encode the collaborative information because uh, it assumes uh, the uh, it assumes the textually seminar items should have the uh, uh, seminar collaborative information. This, but this is not true. Uh, because textually uh, seminar items could have different uh, collaborative informations. So uh, this uh, this let's summarize the existing work existing work uh, on the token uh, on the tokenizations. The first one is about the uh, textual textual indexing. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, the vanilla ID method, which assigns a random ID to uh, represent items. As mentioned before, uh, as discussed, uh, the numbers of the items could be uh, ever large and the uh, token embedding size could be ever large. So they may face a lot of learning if it's, uh, issues. But, uh, uh, and they cannot deal with uh, uh, little items, but this method could literally uh, encode the collaborative information well. The third type of method is called the collaborative index. Uh, this method uh, utilizes the collaborative embedding to generate the item IDs and uh, represent the item using a set of sub IDs. It could reduce the number of token embeddings to norm, so it could uh, increase the learning efficiency. And uh, this method could also capture the collaborative information, and but it cannot deal with the new items. The last type of method is the semantic ID. It, it could also uh, reduce the uh, number of parameters to norm, and uh, it can deal with the new items, but it has a limited ability to learn collaborative information. Although there are some explorations about the uh, tokenization, tokenization method, however, there is a, a is still not uh, clear which method is uh, better, or in uh, in different cases, uh, in in different scenarios, which method is uh, better is also not clear. So, uh, uh how to represent? Uh, uh, how to uh, tokenizing the item is still an open problem. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the existing work on the tokenization is more focused on the item side, but ignore, ignore the user side. And uh, uh, this means uh, usually focus on one domain. In the future, we need to consider the cross domain tokenizations. Okay. Uh, I have discussed the problem of the modeling from the User user representation representation perspective. Besides this, uh, uh, regarding the user behavior modeling, another big challenge is that the users uh, 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 are 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 with with uh, recommender system continuously. Uh, so, so raising the lead, this raising the lead of the lifelong modeling for users. Regarding this direction, there are two uh, challenges. The first, uh, the first one is the lifelong sequential behavior modeling, because the yo the users continuously uh, interact with the system. The length of the interaction history, uh, uh, the historical interaction, the length of the historical interaction sequence could uh, be ever long. How to uh, how to model such long Sequence effectively is still an uh, open problem. Secondly, as the new data could, uh, uh, as, uh, as the users could dynamically interact with the uh, uh, system, so the, there are new, ta new data uh, incrementally coming. So uh, the second problem is how to continually or incrementally learn the user interest. Uh, Firstly, regarding the lifelong sequential behavior modeling, existing work have already verified that uh, with the time goes by, the uh, the length of the uh, user sequence could uh, significantly, significantly increase, and uh, 
the and the modeling modeling the down sequence to the enhance the recommendation performance. This motivates the researchers to consider the LRM for rig uh method. Consider modeling the long sequence for the LRM based recommendation method. However, the researcher found that the existing LRM uh, cannot effectively deal with the long user behavior sequence. As the figure shows, uh, uh, the others find that uh, uh, in the Vecula model, increasing the number of historical interventions could not increase the recommendation performance as seen by the traditional models. Uh, there are also some work to uh, try to solve the problem. Uh, the most representative method is called a RELA. Uh, instead of in, instead of uh, leveraging all all pre historical items uh, for the list for the prediction, this method just retrieves some uh, semantically similar items from the uh, historical items and uh, create as the uh, input for the uh, LMs. And to enable the uh, LMs could deal with the retrieval sequence, it would uh, combine the retrieval sequence as input and uh, take the target item as the uh, prediction labels to form the new items and uh, add it into the uh, tra training data to by to training the LM based models to make the LM model could uh, deal with the retrieval sequence. Uh, this method uh, looks a uh, reasonable uh, solution, but uh, it also has some uh, limitations. Firstly, it re uh, it it is uh, effectively is relies on the uh, target attention. It uh, 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 so it uh, may be not uh, applicable when the input makes the target items. Uh, in the future, uh, we may you to discover uh, other solutions like uh, like memory augmented uh, methods. Regarding the second challenge uh, for the lifelong modeling is the continual learning, that is how to incrementally learn the user interest. Uh, there is also initial work from the uh, USTC. The author studies the effective, effect, effectiveness of some common used method uh, per per periodical retraining. That is when the new data is coming, uh, retraining the model to incrementally uh, learn the user interest. The common retraining method includes the flow retraining, which utilizes all prior data for model updates, and the uh, uh, fine tuning method, which only utilizes new data for model update. And uh, this work uh, specifically studies the NORA based LM for rig method. As the figure shows, the authors find uh, whatever the fraud retraining method or the fine tuning method is used, there is no distinct, distinct performance improvement for the ion based uh, when uh, apply the retraining. While the performance of traditional models uh, could uh, uh, significantly uh, increase with, uh, uh, with a periodical update. So it seems that uh, uh, tradition, uh, uh, traditionally uh, retraining method could uh, uh, cannot uh, solve the continual learning problem for the M based uh, uh, recommendation, mo uh, recommendation models. However, uh, 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 the, the reason for this uh, is not uh, con clear and uh, whether it is uh, common for or M based uh, uh, recommendation method is also unclear, which may um, uh, lead to uh, explore in the future. So I I have discussed some uh, modeling changes from the two perspective, including the user item representation and the lifelong modeling. Next, I will introduce I will discuss the challenges about the cost for the recommendation. The uh, outcome and in cost trade-off is sensitive for for an algorithm with high performance. If its cost is uh, high and beyond the additional cost, it bring 
uh, additional benefits it brings. The, uh, the algorithm could be hard to be, uh, to be really applied. For ELMS, there are tens or billions of, uh, tens or hundreds of billions of parameters this value to, and for the training and the inference, many GPUs and uh, the memories are needed, uh, and uh, the, uh, the computing could, uh, the computation could be ever slow. This, uh, this raises the questions of how to effectively reduce the cost. There are also some initial explorations for both the train for reducing the training and the inference cost. Regarding training, data efficient training is a possible solution. Uh, there is a work uh, discuss uh, uh, the reducing the training cost for the fine tuning process. Uh, when adapting the Large model for recommendations, fine tuning with the recommendation data is usually needed. However, the fine tuning could be ever expensive. Uh, but the authors noted that uh, in the big rig papers, they find that a few short uh, trained uh, big rig model could uh, outperform the traditional uh, uh, collaborative information model. So the authors propose to uh, uh, select uh, identified representative samples from the training data and uh, uh, probably other unimportant uh, uh, data to uh, reduce the training cost. Uh, when when pruning the data, we really achieve two goals. The first one is that we should keep the high accuracy. That means we need to select samples that can lead to higher accuracy. For this goals, the authors leverage the influence function to select most influential samples. The second goal is to say, select more, the second goal is to keep the high uh, efficiency. Uh, that, is, that, is, that means the data selection process should have low cost. Uh, it really compute the influence scores for the large models to be uh, ever high. So to solve the problem, the authors propose to leverage a small, uh, a small model to solve and so substitute for the large model to, and uh, leverage this small model for influence score computation. But there is a gap between the small, uh, small model and the large models. So uh, the authors to propose another uh, scores, extra scores to uh, uh, bridge the gap between the uh, small models and the large models, uh, which is uh, uh, designed based on the gradient of the samples. And then the author, the authors by combines the influence scores and the cost of, uh, effort scores to uh, to select the samples. According to their uh, their their result, we can find uh, uh, only uh, error. Uh, only about about uh, one one thousand samples uh, could uh, using about one thousand samples to retraining the uh, ELM based uh, recommendation model could achieve a uh, uh, better performance compared to the full training methods. Regarding re reducing the inference cost, uh, uh, there are also some explorations. The core is is the destination. Then it is distill the knowledge to small, small models from the uh, large model LMs and uh, utilize the small models uh, for inference. And the scale of the small models is much, uh, is much less than that of the uh, large models. So the inference using the small model could help increase the inference efficiency. Mm -hmm. There are two works. The first work, firstly, uh, uh, compare the inference efficiency between the ion based method and the, the traditional methods. They can find uh, they find that the inference of uh, the ion based method is far uh, less than uh, the uh, traditional models. Moreover, they find that uh, uh, they find that uh, for the uh, the the ion based uh, models could not always outperform 
you know, traditional models. So for the distillation, the, there are some challenges. The first one is that the knowledge in the teacher model, that is also uh, uh, the, or, or say the knowledge in the large and model model uh, could be uh, uh, not reliable. The second one is that uh, the small model is usually based on the uh, conventional collaborative models. Uh, and uh, so there would be a later gap between the uh, LMs and the small models. So uh, this is also a, a challenge. Uh, to solve the problem, uh, the author's purpose of framework as shown in these figures here, uh, the LM based recommender serve as a teacher model and the conventional uh, collaborative field method also as a, a student model. And uh, the predictions of the uh, teacher model is taken as a supervising single loss for the student model enabling uh, the knowledge distillation from the teacher model to the student model. To overcome the challenge of the semantic scapes, uh, uh, the authors directly uh, imp uh, uh, extract the embeddings from, takes embeddings from the large models and uh, input into the uh, the small models to bridge the gap between the semantics. And uh, to, to solve the problems of uh, possible uh, reliable knowledge from the large new models, the, auth the authors uh, proposed the uh, uh, importance of varying distillation. That is to filter out, uh, filter out some uh, unreliable uh, knowledge from the uh, uh, large new models by reweighting. Uh, to to the to identify the uh, importance of the samples, the authors uh, utilize three methods. The first one is uh, utilize the confidence of the uh, RMS predictions on the samples. The second one is utilize the uh, uh, teacher student common sense. Uh, if there is more common sense between the teacher and the student, uh, the the uh, the knowledge in the large model uh, is uh, uh, sort of as more reliable. The last one is uh, util utilizing the ranking position to uh, represent the importance of the samples. Uh, besides this tier, the ranking knowledge or say the recommendation analogy, the another work considering this tier is the recommendation related uh, rationales from of the LM based recommendations. That is to then uh, here the recommendation relation rationales refers to the reasoning steps of the uh, large models. So basically, this mo uh, this work details the recommendation rationales from the stronger large models like ChatGPT to the smaller uh, large models like the uh, Llama Seven B. Okay, in summary, regarding the cost, uh, there are only a few explorations and uh, how to better reduce the cost uh, is still uh, an open problem. Next, uh, I will discuss the last aspect uh, about the open problems and the challenges uh, uh, about the evaluations. Regarding the evaluations, we think to, uh, the first big challenge is, and is about the data. Firstly, most of recommendation data uh, 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 may have uh, appears, appeared before the pre-training stage of the learning models. This may lead to that the pre-training data may include the, uh, the recommendation data and uh, be aware of some information about the data. However, existing work usually does not discuss this. So in the future, we may need to uh, uh, to to explore the evaluation on the data on the data that is that is not in the pre-training data of the learning models to ensure the fair evaluations. Regarding the data issues, the second one is about the feature of the exist, existing open recommendation data may be not enough. For example, 
uh, we may lack the raw features. Meanwhile, many existing uh, works usually just consider leverage of text title information and uh, ignores other information. Other information. This potentially lead, lead to the underutilization of the LMs. And uh, and uh, in this so in this way the the evaluation on such models may also uh, uh cannot reflect the full potential of the LM based recognition methods. Uh, besides this point, the uh, uh the existing recommendation data set has another uh problem is that uh, the data is not diverse enough. Uh, in the content, uh, the they are usually come from the uh, e-commerce platform or the entertainment platform, and uh, regarding the uh, uh, religions or the, the countries, uh, most uh, uh, data set come from the China and or the U.S. So this may uh, may make the evaluation on MS uh, could uh, be not comprehensive or be biased to the China or the US, but fake, but ignore, ignore the uh, other religions. The second challenge for the evaluation we think is uh, about how to evaluate the interactive requisites. ARMs largely promote the development of the interactive recommendations, but it also raises new requirements for the evaluations. Conversational recommendation is uh, one representative uh, interaction, interactive recommendations, which pro, which try to provide uh, personalized recommendations from multi tone di dialogues in natural languages. Uh, for it, for for this recommendation, both the uh, uh, both the conventional qua uh, conversational quality and the recommendation quality are important to evaluate uh, existing traditional. Evaluation method usually using the simulation and the focusing, focusing on matching with the ground truth labels. However, uh, the existing sim simulations are overly simplified, and uh, uh, the the conversation are all often the real world conversation are often vague about the user preference. But the, this evaluation just focuses on it actually matches the ground truth items. Uh, secondly, the evaluation protocol is uh, based on fixed uh, conversations, but the real world could uh, be ever diverging. So uh, uh, we need to uh, design a new evaluation method. Uh, uh, we think uh, uh, simulation with uh, LM based agent is uh, a potential solution existing work has shown that uh, LM based could simulate the user behaviors to some degree, but it's still uh, far from the ideal state, uh, far from ideal uh, simulations. So it is uh, still an open problem. Regarding the interactive recommendations, we think the another focus, uh, we think uh, regarding the Interactive recommendation. The other, the other, another focus is about the long-term recommendations. In these scenarios, we focus on multi-tone user system interactions and uh, emphasis on optimizing the long-term user engagement, such as uh, optimizing the user orientations. However, how to evaluate long-term objective optimizations is also an open problem, as we have not the feedback about the unseen uh, uh, interaction trajectory. To evaluate the evaluation with agent-based simulation is also a point, also a potential solution. But as mentioned, the agent. Uh, Based simulation is still and uh, it still required a great efforts to design a better mechanisms more aligned with the humans. Okay, in summary, there are still open problems and challenges for the uh, AM based recommendations in the aspect of the modeling cost and the evaluations. Uh, 
Okay, that's uh, all of uh, my part. That's the professor. Free phone will introduce the this part. Okay, uh, I'm back. <laughs> and so I will uh, give a quick conclusion and uh, give us some of our source about future directions. And quickly, we can summarize off, uh, our tutorial in this way and roughly we introduce three dimensions about the progresses uh, has been made uh, uh, have been made by the by our community on the topic of Latinx model for recommendation, and uh, naturally we can consider future directions regarding this uh, to further expand uh, this direction. For example, maybe we can consider more metrics about the uh, about the performance of this kind of uh, RM for recommendation results, and we can consider multiple uh, metrics at the same time, uh, so on so forth. And as introduced by uh, Dr. Yang Zhang, there are many direct, uh, many challenges and open problems for the uh, for, 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 for for this research topic uh, regarding the modeling cost or evaluation. And naturally, we can uh, we need to uh, put more attention on this kind of uh, directions to fill uh, to, to bridge the gap. And another way to consider the future work on this research topic is, uh, is uh, considering how uh, this kind of powerful London model will, uh, will change the paradigm or change the format of recommendation. And this is one idea from, the, from one of our perspective paper. And in this paper, we introduced the, the uh, concept of generative recommendation paradigm. Roughly, uh, the motivation of uh, considering generative recommendation is because uh, for most of the current uh, recommender system, uh, the contents in this kind of system are uh, generated by either experts, uh, so-called, uh, or professional guests, uh, so-called the PGC, or the user-generated content, the UGC. Uh, to be honest, uh, all, neither PGC or nor uh, UGC are generated in a uh, in a very personalized way. That is to say, all of these content contents are generated uh, targeting a, a group of people. So this kind of UGC and PGC are not personalized enough. And a generative recommendation is one of the is the idea to fill in the gap. Uh, that is to say, when uh, a specific person or a specific user has some information need then the generative recommender system will call for a personalized generation to generate content so that the information need can be better served. And so here is an example about uh, using this idea in the fashion domain. This is because, uh, why we consider fashion domain is because um, fa uh, in fashion domain, personalization is a very, uh, a very key, fact, uh, key factor uh, affecting whether the user will uh, will be satisfied by the content. And so by considering uh, generative recommendation in fashion, uh, in fashion domain, we can we propose some new ideas about uh, generative outfit recommendation. Roughly, uh, it considers the uh, user features and user histories to generate uh, outfit that is a, a set of clothes for user you know, personalized way. And if you are uh, if you are uh, interested in the details of this paper, you can just find uh, the find it on archive. And this is a set by Sigara twenty four. And uh, we we think uh, there will be more uh, generative recommendation uh, methods or uh, generative recommender models. There will be more more ones. Uh, there will be more applications or more domains uh, using this kind of generative ones. Uh, for example, the personalized advertise or personalized uh, uh, personalized news, maybe so on and so forth. And another uh, another uh, idea about uh, how Latin model may uh, may uh, change the format or uh, or paradigm of recommendation is the is considering the recommender system on agent platform. Uh, the motivation to consider uh, this direction uh, twofold. One, uh, one reason is that uh, we believe uh, this kind of agent platform like uh, GPTs will be one of the most important information channel for the uh, for the internet or for the 
for the user on the internet or on the web uh, in the future. And another thing is uh, this uh, this kind of uh, platforms has uh, has uh, has um, a vast number of LM based uh, agents. Uh, if I remember it correctly, uh, the number of agents on GPTs has uh, exist uh, three million. And so uh, how to recommend this kind of uh, RM based agent to user has become a new problem. Actually, uh, this kind of recommendation is quite different from the conventional recommendation because the items uh, in this kind of a a uh, agent platform are agents and agents are quite different from the items in traditional uh, recommended systems because these uh, agents can in, in, uh, interact with uh, users and, and will uh, evolve as, as ad, uh, interacting with users. So uh, we read another perspective paper about how to build this kind of recommended system on a, uh, this kind of agent platforms. And roughly we imagine how the workflow of the recommended system will look like in these systems. And for details, you can also find the paper on RKF. Um, we think there will be a lot of work uh, in the future regarding this direction. And since there will be a long way to um, to really uh, implement this kind of uh, recommended system. And we envision uh, along this process, we envision there will be three milestones. One is uh, the basic version where the, uh, where the only the user agent in interactions are considered uh, during this kind of, uh, in this kind of uh, agent recommended system. And based on this version, we have more interactions, for example, the uh, interactions between the agent and the agent recommender, and the interactions between or among multiple agents will be uh, considered in the following versions. And regarding the future directions, another way is to um, another way to consider these future directions is to uh, is to refer. Uh, what ha what is happening in the general domain of land language model, and uh, and uh, I think the most uh, most important uh, insight or most important uh, uh, takeaway for uh, for the development of land language model in the last year might be the scaling law. So uh, in just a, uh, in very recent uh, there here is a, this is a very recent work and here is another one. Uh, both of them are from uh, Meta AI. And they explore the scaling law of recommended system. And actually, uh, we have invited uh, two of the authors from the of these two papers to uh, to attend uh, this conference. And yesterday, uh, they have uh, they have given a keynote talk in our workshop. So, uh, and both of them are still in this venue, and you can find them, uh, Doctor Rui and Jia Qi. So to 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 uh, to ask for more details of, about the about these two uh, papers, and roughly uh, with these two papers, we we have known we have known that uh, scaling law uh, might really exist in the uh, in the recommended system as a industry scale data, and uh, when the model uh, is large enough, then it really gets some very good very surprising performance, and. But we still don't know uh, about, uh, for example, uh, how to uh, integrate more knowledge into this kind of uh, large scale uh, uh, user behavior uh, foundation models, and also how to incorporate all this this kind of set of uh, set of information or or uh, incorporate more set of information into this model. And we think this kind of problems uh, uh, are worthwhile for further exploration. Uh, this is the last perspective for uh, considering future directions about this research topic. Uh, that is, um, generally, our recommended system is uh, can be seen as or or is a special case of social media AI. So we can consider the future direction of our uh, for our for rec uh, from the from the perspective of social media AI. Roughly, uh, we found that. Uh, in the domain of social media AI, the uh, the researchers in that domain are uh, 
uh, are focusing on or um, uh, paying more attention to uh, embedding uh, social values into uh, into uh, into this kind of systems. So we believe in the future, this kind of social values will be more considered in uh, recommended systems and uh, large language model based on recommended systems as well. So this could be a future direction. And OK, that's all for uh, our consideration about the future actions of this research topic. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask. And if you are consider if you're interested in this uh, for this slides or this uh, related papers or other uh, accounts, to, uh, you can just that scan the QR code. OK, that's all for our uh, tutorial. Uh, thanks again for your attending. and. Uh, if you are, uh, you have any questions, you can just uh, uh, we can also uh, discuss uh, offline. Okay, that's all. Thank you.